Hi friends, we're reading Full Color Captain Underpants and the Revolting Revenge of the Radioactive Robo Boxers by Dev Pilkey. Bear with me while I get back to We Were on Chapter 6. Here we go, Chapter 6. 65 million years ago. The primitive midday sky lit up with several blinding flashes as the purple potty suddenly appeared in the top of an ancient tree. George and Harold had successfully brought crackers back to where they had found him. But when they opened the door of the purple potty, they discovered they'd also brought a stowaway. What the heck is going on here? cried Mr. Krupp as he hung from a branch high up in the treetop. Oh no, cried George. Mr. Krupp must have been standing too close to the purple potty when we zapped backward in time. He got zapped back with us. Harold reached out his hand to grab hold of Mr. Krupp. How could things get any worse? He asked. Suddenly, the tree started to shake. Boom, 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 went the tree. George and Harold looked down and saw Tippy's gigantic robo pants kicking the side of the tree. What's he doing here? cried Harold. I don't know, said George, but I think we're about to fall. The horrible kicking continued and the tree shook wildly. Finally, the purple potty slid sideways and toppled over. We're doomed, screamed Harold as they all fell. The purple potty cracked and split apart as it tumbled down the side of the tree. Mr. Krupp fell too, smacking against every branch on the way down. Suddenly, the purple potty hit the ground with a terrible crash and broke apart into a thousand pieces. Mr. Krupp hit the ground too, but was surprised to find out that he wasn't hurt a bit. Big Tippy kicked through the wreckage of the purple potty, but could not find any trace of George or Harold or their pets. Where did they go? He asked. Look up here there, cried two tiny Tippies who were peeking out of Big Tippy's pocket. Crackers had grabbed George and Harold and Sulu at the last second. Good boy, Crackers, cried George. You saved us. Not for long, screamed Big Tippy as he peered peevishly from a porthole on top of his robo pants. George and Harold looked down at Mr. Krupp, who was still trying to figure out how he'd fallen 60 feet and not gotten hurt. The two boys snapped their fingers. Suddenly, a welcome smile spread across Mr. Krupp's face. Immediately, he pulled off his shoes and socks. Then he unclipped his tie and ripped off his shirt. He grabbed a red curtain from the cardboard box beside him and tied it around his neck as he wiggled out of his pants. Captain Underpants was back! and Tibby Tinkle Trousers and his two tiny twins were in for the fight of their lives. Chapter seven, two tiny traitors. George and Harold ran through the thick jungle foliage with Crackers and Sulu flying above them. Captain Underpants decided to tag along too, just for fun. Big Tippy jumped onto the back of a nearby Tyrannosaurus Rex and chased after them. You can't run forever, 
shouted Big Tippy. When I catch you guys, I'm gonna tear you apart. Can we help? Asked the two tiny tippies who were tucked away in Big Tippy's jacket pocket. No, yelled Big Tippy sternly. You two keep quiet while I take care of business. This is a job for a man, not two little twerps like you. As the chase continued, the two tiny tippies grumbled to themselves. Boy, I'm getting tired of that giant jerk bossing us around, said Tiny Tippy. Me too, said slightly younger Tiny Tippy. He thinks he's such a big shot just because he's huge. I sure wish I had I still had my goosey grow 4000 said Tiny Tippy. Then I could make myself big again. I was just thinking the same thing said slightly younger Tiny Tippy. But unfortunately, we stored the Goosey Grow 4000 in the top half of our robo suit and Captain Underpants destroyed it back in chapter eight of our last epic novel. Hey, cried Tiny Tippy. Why don't we go back? Er, I mean forward in time to chapter eight of our last epic novel. We could grab that Goosey Grow 4000 and make ourselves gigantic. I like the way you think, me, said slightly younger Tiny Tippy. So while Big Tippy chased everybody through the treacherous jungles of the Cretaceous period, the two Tiny Tippies set their tinkle time travelometers for the night of the big battle from chapter eight of our last epic novel. Big Tippy was so engrossed in his pursuits of our heroes, he didn't even notice the teensy weensy blue sparks of flashing light emanating from his pocket as his two devious doppelgangers disappeared in a whiff of prime, primeval, primeval toposphere. Chapter eight, Mission Improbable. Instantly, the two tiny tippies zapped forward in time, only to find themselves knee deep in something creamy, coconutty, and marshmallowy. Honey, said a mother who was setting her dining, her dinner table. Two little pairs of pants are walking around in our ambrosia salad. Oh, really? said her son. And I'm the one seeing a therapist? Tiny Tippy and slightly younger Tiny Tippy crawled out of the serving bowl and shook off the pineapple chunks and mandarin orange slices that had stuck to their legs. Then they jumped to the floor and slipped through the mail slot in the front door. Outside, they could hear the crashing sounds of the terrifying battle between Captain Underpants and Big Tippy. The two tiny tippies ran toward the noises until they arrived at the school's football field. Captain Underpants had just started pulling on Tippy's robo arms. One by one, the rivets in robo suit's thick steel belt began to pop. Captain Underpants yanked and tugged and pulled, and finally the robo suit tore in half with a terrible clank. Tiny Tippy and slightly younger Tiny Tippy ran over to the place where Captain Underpants had dropped the upper portion of the robo suit. Quickly, they searched through the twisted metal until they found what they were looking for, the Goosey Grow 4000. Outside, they could hear the crackling sounds of Big Tippy zapping himself backward in time. A blinding flash lit up the nighttime sky 
as the two tippies dragged the Goosey Grove 4000 from the wreckage and carried it with them through the parking lot. Soon they came to a darkened street behind some old warehouses. Okay, said Tiny Tippy, you zap me, then I'll zap you. Hey, said slightly younger Tiny Tippy, how come you get to go first? Because I'm slightly older than you, said Tiny Tippy, and slightly more mature. All right, all right, said slightly younger Tiny Tippy, who could not argue with the fact that Tiny Tippy was indeed 10 minutes more mature than himself. Let's just do this thing and get it over with. He aimed the Goosey Grow 4000 at Tiny Tippy and jumped up on the button. And before you could even say, Glizzert, a beam of energy zapped Tiny Tippy, causing him to grow 30 feet tall. Zap me again, said Tiny Tippy. All right, said slightly younger Tiny Tippy. But then you'll zap me, right? Sure, sure, said Tiny Tippy. I promise. Glurzert went another bright beam of energy. This time, Tiny Tippy grew to be 60 feet tall. Ha, 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 he laughed. Behold, I have been reborn as Super Mega Tippy! My turn, my turn, cried slightly younger Tiny Tippy. Super Mega Tippy reached down and grabbed the Goosey Grow 4000. He tucked it into the cup holder of, on his electrical panel and waved goodbye to slightly younger Tiny Tippy. Hey, cried slightly younger Tiny Tippy. What about me? Sorry, said Super Mega Tippy, but this is a job for a man, not a little twerp like you. Chapter nine. Meanwhile, seven pages ago, 65 million years earlier, Big Tippy had chased our heroes to the jagged edge of a cliff overlooking a lake. Crackers grabbed George and Harold by their shirt collars and they all sailed safely over the edge of the cliff to join Captain Underpants in the clouds. Big Tippy's Tyrannosaurus Rex screeched to a halt at the cliff's edge and roared ferociously at the five floating friends. We won! Captain Underpants laughed at Tippy. Now it's our turn to chase you! This isn't a game! yelled Big Tippy. This is serious! He leaped off the neck of the T-Rex and grabbed Captain Underpants with his patented robotic Extendoflex me mechanic gripper. Together they fell a thousand feet into the lake below. When they emerged from the depths of the lake, something had changed. Tippy was still just as mean and ornery as ever but Captain Underpants looked different. What the heck is going on here? yelled the angry looking hero. Oh no, cried George. Captain Underpants got water on his head. He changed back into Mr. Krupp. Quick crackers, cried Harold. Fly us down there as fast as you can. Crackers glided down toward the tempestuous struggle below, and the boys snapped their fingers with all their might. But it did no good. 
Mr. Krupp's head was still snow soaking wet, so he could not change back into Captain Underpants. Well, look what I just figured out, cried Big Tibby. Captain Underpants turns back into a crabby old elementary school principal whenever he gets wet. You leave him alone, yelled George, still snapping his fingers in vain. Yeah, cried Harold. It's not a fair fight anymore. Wow, laughed Big Tippy incredulously. He's got to be the world's easiest superhero to defeat. I could have destroyed him with a squirt gun. Suddenly, a blinding flash lit up the world around them. Then came the footsteps. Terrible, deafening, tumultuous footsteps that shook the earth with each thundering stomp. Finally, a massive shadow spread across the lake. Big Tippy looked up. It was Super Mega Tippy. Hey! shouted Big Tippy. He quickly checked his jacket pocket and found it to be empty. Where'd you come from? How'd you get so big? Where's the other one? None of that is important now, said Super Mega Tippy. What's important now is who's in charge. Hey, you'll never believe this, said Big Tippy, ignoring his diabolical double. I just figured out that if you get Captain Underpants wet, he loses his superpowers. His weakness is water, said Super Mega Tippy. Wow, really? I know, said Big Tippy. I couldn't believe it myself. Hey, I'm going to destroy him real quick. Then we can get out of here and go rule the world and stuff. You're not going to destroy him, said Super Mega Tippy. I am. Now hold on, bub, said Big Tippy. I caught him, so I'm going to destroy him. Oh, yeah, said Super Mega Tippy with a growl that made the surface of the lake tremble. Well, I'm bigger than you, so I'm going to decide who destroys who. He took a giant step toward Big Tippy and reached down with an, an Extendo Flex Mechanic Gripper. Not so fast, cried Big Tippy. He pressed a button on his control panel, causing the back of his robo pants to lower. Suddenly, a gigantic metal arm emerged from the depths of Tippy's giant robo rear revealing a 40-ton thermonuclear bomb. You take one step closer and I'll blow us all to smithereens, said Big Tippy. You're forgetting something, yelled Super Mega Tippy. I have a bomb too, and it's a lot bigger than yours. Super Mega Tippy took a step closer as Big Tippy pressed the button. Suddenly, a light on the side of the bomb began to flash red. A computerized voice emanating from the bomb's arming system began the countdown. This bomb will detonate in 60 seconds, said the voice. You, you press the button! screamed Super Mega Tippy incredulously. I can't believe you actually pressed the button. I don't care, cried Big Tippy. I've been working on my revenge for years. I'm not going to let you rob me of this moment. I don't care if it kills me too. This bomb will detonate in 45 seconds, 
said the bomb. We can't turn these bombs off, you know, said Super Mega Tippy. Once the countdown starts, it's over. I told you, I don't care, said Big Tippy. I just want to be the one who finally destroys Captain Underpants. Super Mega Tippy reached down with an uncoiling Extendo Flex McKinney Gripper and cut Mr. Krupp free. Hey! screamed Big Tippy. What are you doing? He's mine! said Super Mega Tippy as he drew back his foot. But what about me? said Big Tippy. What about my bomb? Your bomb, your problem, said Super Mega Tippy as he kicked Big Tippy with all his might. Chapter 10. What really killed the dinosaurs? No! screamed Big Tippy as he sailed into the clouds at an incredible speed. This bomb will detonate in 30 seconds, said the bomb. Big Tippy flew across North America, soaring faster and faster through the stratosphere. This bomb will detonate in 15 seconds, said the bomb. Big Tippy began to lose altitude as he sailed toward the Gulf of Mexico. This bomb will detonate in five seconds, said the bomb. Four, three, two, one. Finally, Big Tippy landed just off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula with a violently colossal splashdown, as seen below. Kablooski! The massive explosion that followed blew a chunk in the earth 15 miles deep and more than 60 miles wide. Terrible earthquakes shook the entire planet as a gigantic tsunami sent a towering wall of seawater rolling across the continents. What's happening? cried George. It's that dumb nuclear bomb, shouted Mega Tippy, Super Mega Tippy. It just triggered the start of the Cenozoic era. I'm going to become extinct if I don't get out of here. Quickly, Super Mega Tippy set his tinkle time travelometer for 64,793,216 years into the future and pressed the away we go button. Suddenly, gigantic bolts of lightning began shooting out of Super Mega Tippy's robo pants as a ball of blue light enveloped him. Quick crackers, cried Harold as a thick volcanic ash began blocking out the sun. Fly into the blue light. It's our only chance to escape. Crackers pointed his long reptilian neck toward the crackling orb and the four friends sailed downward into the blinding blue lightning. Chapter 11, 206,784 years ago. A flash of white light filled the mid-afternoon haze of the Pleistocene epic. The crystal blue lake that had once been there was now gone. In its place were vast savanna plains stretching out to thick forested hillsides and rocky caves. All was quiet except for the sounds of insects and birds and a faint rhythmic drumming 
far off in the forest. Where are we? asked George. I think the better question would be, when are we? said Harold. Super Mega Tippy was surprised to see George and Harold in Crackers and Sulu. Well, 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 he said. It looks like we have four stowaways. But what Siva Mega Tibby did not realize is that he had a fifth stowaway as well. It was slightly younger Tiny Tibby who was at that very moment, who at that very moment was carefully crawling down a button on Super Mega Tippy's shirt. That stupid Mega Tippy thinks he can lie to me and get away with it, said slightly younger Tiny Tippy as he jumped onto the control panel. But I'll teach him a lesson he'll never forget. Slightly younger Tiny Tippy pried up an aluminum vent and slipped effortlessly into the wiry innards of the control panel. First, he reversed the polarity on the emulsifying sasolophalange inhibitor. Then he switched the blue and green wires on the reverse some globulating tracto McFractionalizer. Finally, he snipped all the wires to the Freezy Beam 4000's off button. Ha ha ha! laughed slightly younger Tiny Tippy. The next time that big jerk uses his Freezy Beam 4000, he's going to get a big surprise. Meanwhile, the drama outside was getting serious. Super Mega Tippy swatted at our heroes as they soared bravely through the Ionian sky. Crackers skillfully swooped and dived and loop-de-looped -looped as the Extendo Flex Mechani Gripper whizzed after him. But Super Mega Tippy quickly became impatient and unleashed two more Extendo Flex Mechani Grippers. Poor Crackers could not outmaneuver them all, and the four friends were soon captured. I've got you now, screamed Super Mega Tippy. Hey, look, said George, pointing at the ground behind Super Mega Tippy. There's a bunch of cave people down there watching us. I'm not falling for that trick, said Super Mega Tippy. As soon as I turn around, you guys are going to try to escape. No, seriously, cried Harold. We're not lying. Look behind you. Super Mega Tippy glanced quickly and noticed that the boys were indeed telling the truth. Standing behind them at the edge of the forest were about a dozen very surprised looking cave people staring up in dumbfounded bewilderment. You boys shouldn't be surprised to see caves, people, said Super Mega Tippy as he studied the strange prehistoric people. We're in the middle of the Pleistocene epoch. This is around the time that the first human families started to appear on Earth. I'll bet you dumb kids didn't know that, did you? Super Mega Tippy turned to smile haughtily at George and Harold, but of course they were gone. Sulu had bitten through three of the Extendo Flex Mechani Grippers and the four friends had fluttered away. No! screamed Super Mega Tippy as he stomped his gigantic feet in frustration. They startled cave, the startled cave squirrels screamed and ran in terror back to their homes in the deep forest. Suba Mega Tippy grabbed some strong vines and tied Mr. Crop to a boulder underneath a waterfall. There, he sneered. 
This should keep you moist and powerless until I get back. Then he stormed into the forest, searching for George and Harold and their pets. Chapter 12, Calling All Cave People. How are we ever gonna get out of this mess? Asked Harold. I don't know, said George, but we're going to need Tibby Tingle trousers if we ever want to get back home. Are you kidding? said Harold. We can't trust that guy. He can't even trust himself. I know, said George, but Tibby has a time machine and we don't. So we're going to have to defeat him. But we need an army to defeat that guy, said Harold. So let's go get an army, said George. The four friends glided above the grassy plains as they followed the sounds of beating drums. Soon they arrived at the forest. The drumming was getting louder. Crackers swooped down and landed behind some bushes near the caves. Just beyond them was the cave people village. George and Harold and Crackers and Sulu peeked over the thick bushes as they watched the caves people go about their daily routines. They seemed peaceful, so George decided to speak up. Hello, said George. We come in peace. We are friends. The cave people looked confused and startled. They did not seem to understand. Maybe they don't speak English, said Harold. Hello, hey, said George, who only spoke one other language. Iwe omke inwe ispe iwe arwe ayins fray. That didn't work either. The cave people grunted and sniffed at George and Harold and their pets, but they said nothing. Suddenly, off in the distance, the sounds of gigantic footsteps came thundering through the deep forest. Tippy was coming and he was getting closer and closer with each terrifying stomp. I know you're in that village, Tibby screamed, but you can't hide from me. Crash! Tibby crashed through the trees and stomped into the village, kicking over huts and smushing everything in sight. The terrified cave people grabbed their children and ran for the safety of the caves behind their village. George and Harold and Crackers and Sulu ran into the caves also and hid with the cave people in the darkness as the destruction outside continued. After a while, some cave teenagers started a campfire. The flickering light illuminated the massive walls of the caves as the cave people whimpered and huddled together in horror. Wow, said George some army they turned out to be. It's not their fault, said Harold. They've never seen giant robo pants before. They're just scared. If we could only communicate with them, said George, there's got to be some way to reach them. Harold looked up at the giant blank walls of the cave. How about pictures? he asked. Hey, good idea, said George. Harold walked over to the campfire and grabbed a charred smoking stick from the burned cinders, burning cinders. Then he went to one side of the giant cave and started to create the world's first cave drawing. At first, the cave people were astonished. They had never seen anybody draw before. They laughed and pointed and jumped up and down every time Harold drew something new. But when Harold drew Tippy and his robo pants, the cave people became frightened. 
They grunted nervously and lowered their hands in fear and submission. Wow, said Harold. How are we ever going to change their minds about Tippy? I know, said George. Let's make a wordless comic. They'll understand that. Good idea, said Harold. Let's do it. So George and Harold found a ladder and began creating the world's first comic, very first comic. The cave people watched with excitement as George and Harold's tale unfolded. Soon their opinions about Tippy and his robo pants began to evolve. All right, friends, that's all for today. We will pick up with chapter 13 in the next video. Thank you for listening. Please like my video and subscribe to my channel at Roz Reads. Thank you. Bye.